Hello all and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to be inspired, empowered, and learn to live our happiest lives. Today we speak about the importance of public relations, changes in the workplace in 2021, and building and preserving wealth. We first meet Alyssa Miller, CEO and founder of I Miller Public Relations. She will share why companies often devalue the importance of messaging and influencing in the market. An important message for entrepreneurs. Next, we learn what significant changes will occur in the workplace in 2021 with Jeannie Walden. She is the Chief Innovation Marketing Officer of Daily Pay. We then meet David Morgan, founder of TheMorganReport.com and author of Second Chance. He is educating us on building and preserving wealth. Now let's meet our guests. Hi, Alyssa. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. Thank you so much for having me, Marcy. It is a pleasure. It's great to have you. And I'm really excited to have you because we're going to be talking about public relations and you're the founder of I Miller. And I, you know, I don't know that a lot of us know what public relations is. So can you tell us exactly what it is? Absolutely. So, you know, the the traditional definition of public relations is the representation of a company and its message to the public. And what I don't think that viewers may realize is that uh, the majority of what they see, content that they see, whether it's on TV, reading in newspapers, magazines, is all driven by public relations. Public relations, while Mm -hmm. important with the regular and general public, is also a key influential and educational channel for journalists and media organizations to get access to information about trends and executives, thought leaders, information, companies, products, services, launches, beyond. And the only way that information actually gets to those organizations and influencers that convert that into interesting articles and TV stories like this is through public relations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's definitely worth, it seems, to make that investment because it certainly is an investment for yourself. But if you're doing something fantastic and no one knows about it, (laughs) then what difference does it make? Exactly. (laughs) So let's talk about companies. And uh, one of the things that you've shared is that they devalue public relations. And why is that? Well, you know, because public relations, unlike marketing, right? When you look at marketing or traditional marketing efforts, um, marketing is about lead generation. That is the core function of marketing versus public relations. While you do get leads when you do public relations campaigns, it really is more about information. It's about influencing. It's about shifting changes in the marketplace. It's about leading those viewers and readers to think differently, uh, to um, take that information and put that into practice for what they're doing uh, to stay abreast of, uh, you know, cutting edge solutions and technologies that are bringing our entire world forward in ways that we don't ordinarily know. Um, And that can be really challenging because some of those messages can be uh, a little bit nebulous, right? And it's hard to follow. Mm -hmm. And so having a good public relations firm that can be a conduit and a translator between some technology speak, for instance, to business speak, to consumer speak uh, is really, really important. Yeah, it's, I would think so. And so what you were talking about a campaign, so what would be a successful campaign? Yeah, so you know, our company focuses on global communications infrastructure. And what that mm-hmm. pretty much means is anyone who is using the internet to connect to anything, that's global communications infrastructure, right? It's the, you know, we mm-hmm. all used to call it the World Wide Web, and it literally is an yeah. interconnected web of networks. And to be able to do that, um, you have to be able to interconnect networks from subsea 
to terrestrial to wireless. Um, there are different points where you can interconnect those networks. Those are what data center points are. Uh, those interconnection facilities but it's also to understand that because of the accessibility of the internet all of these different services and applications are developed to use the internet right you, you talk, we're talking yeah. about you know video streaming applications to gaming to even iot um you know your alexa your google device your youtube all of that type of stuff uses this global internet infrastructure and the companies that we represent are enabling capabilities that sometimes and oftentimes aren't already accessible. And that means that maybe they're not, it's a new mm. location. Um, we are working with a subsea network provider connecting North America to Denmark with the first subsea cable to do so in 20 years. That means mm. that the capabilities for interconnection and bandwidth and speed, performance, reliability, all improves. And what that does is it enables more applications to be able to share it across those continents, as a good example. Um, other types of campaigns that we work oh, wow. on are, are new product launches. Product launches are mm -hmm. really important, especially if you're looking to get to particular companies that need access or capabilities with those products. And you have to think about how do you reach those buyers? Where are they reading? What are they looking at? What social media platforms are there? What trends are they watching? Who are their executive leaders? And there's a lot of thought in, into understanding how to reach those target markets that goes into the strategy and then tactical solutions like press releases and articles and TV mm -hmm. appearances all go into delivering and amplifying that message to their markets. Right. And so what would you tell someone that's interested in public relations? To, to reach out and to ask questions about how a public relations company can help you. Now, public relations companies mm -hmm. should be able to tell you exactly how they can help you, whether it's getting article mentions, appearances, speaking opportunities, uh, getting recognized by awards, uh, getting social media campaigns to increase followers, uh, to getting messages out there. And you should be able to ask them specifically of what they're going to do for you, what are their goals, and then what's the outcome of those goals, right? Those KPIs, right. The, the key performance indicators that are more easily done in marketing, right? That that mm -hmm. that equates the number of leads, the actual leads or impressions that you get. But in public relations, it really is about how are you able to get your message out to the market and to inspire others to write about you. Right. And that all such important stuff. You know, anybody that's written a book or starting a company like you said and or an existing company. So if someone had more questions, wanted to even speak with you, how could they reach you? Sure, so uh, our website, it's fairly simple. I'm millerpr.com, just as it says. I, I do like to say that I am PR. Um, it's kind of a fun uh, acronym okay. for our company name because that's what we do is PR, so I am PR. Um, and uh, we, we do work in the communications infrastructure space. We do advisory services, consulting services, uh, strategic services, Wonderful. and tactical implementation as well. Yeah. Thank, Alyssa, thank you so much for coming on and informing us and helping us to understand exactly how this world works. I appreciate it. Well, I so appreciate your interest and your time today, and uh, thank you to you, and um, hello to your viewers. Well, wonderful. Have a wonderful Saturday, and have a great one. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Next week, we meet Colette Smith. She's the founder and president of Believe In You, Inc. She is NFL's first black female coach in history. We then meet Darren Karp. She is the host of People TV's Reality Check. Lastly, we meet Dennis Katotis. He is a LinkedIn strategist and founder of Linked Superpowers. Next up, we hear about changes in the workplace with Jeannie Walden. Hi, Jeannie. Welcome to Wake Up with Marcy. 
Hey, Marcy. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having me on the show. I'm excited to have you on the show. So innovation in the workplace. Things are Absolutely. In 2021. Very much so. So let's talk about some new technology that's going to be introduced in 2021. Yeah, you know, we made this crazy race in 2020 to digitize everything to support a completely remote world. And I think we got the key efforts done. But in 2021, we've had the opportunity to create some fantastic new technologies, both from a financial perspective and a health perspective that are going to give us more options in the workplace. You know, from a health perspective, there are apps out there that are being introduced that allow voice recognition over whether you have COVID or not. And it sounds crazy, and I know most places aren't accepting that as a legitimate test, but now you can speak into your app and it will identify whether you positively or potentially positively have COVID, which allows you to keep yourself safe, decide if you need to go in for a test, and keep people in the workplace safe with you if you're one of those essential workers. So key technologies as we wait for the vaccine to come out. On the financial front, though, uh -huh. we're looking at digital paychecks. And I know that sounds silly and it sounds like it might not be a big deal, but so many people are used to getting a traditional paper paycheck and companies have had to rebuild their back end systems to support payroll that's done all digitally from the payroll person down to the employee. And the employees love that. So solutions that provide on demand pay and immediate access as you earn it are really helping bridge that financial gap that we're seeing. That's incredible. So how about uh, equity and inclusivity? How is that changing in the workplace? So much more important than it's been ever in our lifetimes and really exciting. You know, we at Daily Pay, we've done studies that show that one out of six employees are actually looking into a company's diversity programs, how inclusive they are, and they're looking into ERGs, employee resource groups, to find out how employees are supporting and celebrating you know, who we are as people, our ethnicities, um, and really looking at pay equity as a role as well. So it's a great time and a great message for employers to really step up to the plate and take a look at everything that's happening internally. So it's fantastic. Incredible. Yeah. So what mm -hmm. about this remote trend? Is this going to continue? Oh. Absolutely. You know, there's about 50% of the workforce working remotely right now. And the expectation is even as the vaccines come out, we're going to stay at a permanent 25% of a remote workforce. Mm -hmm. However, if you ask employees in a daily pay, we did ask employees from all different companies, 80% of them said they would prefer to stay remote most of the time, if at all possible. People are looking for the ability to manage their lives based on their personal needs. And I think yeah. that's gonna stick with us now. It's not going back. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm a big fan. Um, I do, I think that missing the interaction with others uh, is part of it, but you, it is more positive to be at home and there's a lot more benefits, it seems. And, and it's possible. So, well, Let's talk about Zoom. Here we are on Zoom. I mean, how do we keep our employees from burning out, from being on? My husband's on Zoom all day. What are we doing? <laughs> Right. Well, you know, the Zoom fatigue is real. Um, the remote working fatigue is real. And employers really need to step up and understand that. You know, we've done so much at our company to make sure that people take time off. And I think yeah. one of the trends that many companies are seeing is that the percentage of time off has significantly decreased. People feel like, oh, I'm home. I don't yeah. deserve to take time off. If I take time off, I'm compelled to go check my computer and see what I'm missing. And, and that's really not the case for our mental well-being. We need to have that time off. So forcing people to do things, to take time off, to step away from their computer. You know, at Daily Pay, we hired a company called Bell Fitness to do virtual personal training mm. to force us to exercise and to get that sense of mental well-being being as well yeah. as physical fitness and it's been fantastic that's really really important and you know keeping our mental mindset strong it's true and it's hard not to uh keep going back to the computer but i want to thank you so much for coming on wake up with marcy and giving such invaluable insight 
as to what's to come and uh, get us thinking. Yeah, thanks, Marcy. I enjoyed being here. All right, have a wonderful day. We'll see you thanks, soon. Thanks, you too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Next week, we meet Colette Smith. She's the founder and president of Believe In You, Inc. She is NFL's first black female coach in history. We then meet Darren Karp. She is the host of People TV's Reality Check. Lastly, we meet Dennis Katotis. He is a LinkedIn strategist and founder of Linked Superpowers. Next up, we learn about building and preserving wealth with David Morgan. Hi, David. Welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. Thanks, Marcy. Great to be with you. So first of all, I'd love to hear about what is the MorganReport.com? It's a financial newsletter I started over 20 years ago, looking at the macro picture, the big picture of uh, economic forces that are changing so rapidly in our society. And the basic premise that uh, the paper money system only lasts for so long. Every fiat system that's ever been tried has ended in failure. So we're at that point now, and we are looking for a new monetary reset. No kidding. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, precious metals in 2021? I think uh, the precious metals, I'm not, you know, I'm considered a gold bug or silver bug by many, but actually it's just a transition point where the system starts to break down and a new system starts to occur. You see a transition where things of time held value like gold and silver are something that some of the population grab onto as sort of a safe harbor as this transition takes place. Mm -hmm. So I'm favorable to it in, let's say, a hedged way. In other words, like a 10% of your holding. You don't want to bet the farm that gold and silver are the only way to go. There's a lot of things to invest in outside of the precious metals, but it is that safe haven that people seek when there's uncertainty in the currency system. Exactly. So another one, Bitcoin, that seems to be a big buzzword too. Everyone's talking about Bitcoins. What do you think about that in 2021? Very interesting. You know, I've thought about it from the inception. In fact, I was one of the early ones to learn about it through Robert Prechter. But um, I've always been a bit cautious. I wrote an article called My Two Bits about Bitcoin. And I said an article pretty much holds true today, and that's probably five years old that governments and central banks don't like competition. Now I do, I am all for alternative currencies, gold and silver being two of the best through history. Bitcoin is sort of a hybrid between a technology and the store of value, but it hasn't come to the fore until recently. Wall Street really got behind Bitcoin the last few months. And I think that's gonna drive the price even higher. Whether it's adopted uh, significantly still remains to be determined in my view, but I do think it shows where we are, which we started this discussion. We are in a transition phase. That's one alternative to this transition. So, so what do you, I, I'm really trying to understand all what Bitcoin is. I mean, like, why do you want to put money into Bitcoin? And like, there's a lot of fees that are involved in Bitcoin and transitioning money. And why do people like Bitcoin? Well, I think a lot of people that are involved, uh, you know, get it. But there's a great vast majority that don't because, first of all, it's decentralized. Well, that's not really true. You have to go through Coinbase or Genesis or some platform. A KYC, know your customer, so you have to be totally identified. So it's really not as anonymous as cash. I mean, cash in pesos or cash in U.S. dollars or cash in Canadian dollars is more anonymous than Bitcoin in most cases. Yes, you can do anonymous trades. It is rather cumbersome and it's rather slow. So function as money, it doesn't do very well, especially with the volatility. But it's being um, put out mostly by the higher ups, the Wall Street types, that it's a store of value, but it's dependent on a, a database of computers that mine these algorithms that basically get a math formula they have to solve. And every time one's solved, they add to the block. 
So it becomes more and more complicated, not less and less complicated. So I do think that it set the tone that the central banks are going to go to a blockchain based currency system. But that doesn't necessarily mean that Bitcoin will be adopted. The blockchain will. So now we hear CBDC Conkley, central banks, digital currencies. Well, central bank means just that, central. It's not a distributed ledger where you are free and you're independent. You're basically controlled by some central authority that takes your you know, name, rank, and serial number for you to proceed in the, their monetary system. I see. So what about global economy? Where are we? Uh, we're on a, a transition again. I hate to overuse the word. But no, we are in a situation where we're having disruptions throughout the supply chain. For example, everything in modern society runs on computers, which basically means semiconductors. For a semiconductor to be uh, put to use, it, takes, it travels about 25 countries. So this is a very complex supply chain. So the more complicated something becomes, the more points of failure are available. So because of that fact, we're getting more and more stress in the system and it spills out into everything, energy, food, communications, hacking the security systems, mm -hmm. which we've been hacked. And that's a big concern of mine. I've been writing about in the Morgan Report for several months now. So we are becoming very, very vulnerable, vulnerable. to many vectors that yeah. could take place and disrupt us even further then we've already been disrupted, not even taking into account the political strife throughout the planet. Just talking about basically the hardware side of things, not the software side. Right, right. It's really quick, David, tell us about your book, Second Chance, and where we can find you. Morganreport.com. There's a book tab. You can pull it down. There's three books that uh, I've written. And Second Chance is about the upcoming final leg up in the precious metals. You really want to participate in that. But again, you just want to take a small bite. You don't need to eat the whole apple. Thank you so much, David. Really appreciate all of your insight because we can use it right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, Marcy. It's been fun talking to you. You too, David. Have a wonderful time there in Mexico and have a great week. Thank you very much. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Next week, we meet Colette Smith. She's the founder and president of Believe In You, Inc. She is NFL's first black female coach in history. We then meet Darren Karp. She is the host of People TV's Reality Check. Lastly, we meet Dennis Katotis. He is a LinkedIn strategist and founder of Linked Superpowers. Wake Up With Marcy is sponsored by True Serenity Tea which is a monthly subscription box that delivers award-winning loose leaf teas from around the globe to your doorstep. Check out trueserenitytea.com to order your subscription box. So much incredible information on today's show. So I thank you for sharing your Saturday with me. And I wanted to share with you about a new series I'm doing on Instagram Live called Menopause Monday. It's time that we openly discuss what's happening to our bodies, ladies and how we can help ourselves. And men, it's important for you to understand also. This Monday at 10.30 a.m. on Instagram Live, at Wake Up With Marcy, I speak with triple board certified neurologist, Dr. Russell Saraski about what's happening to our memory and why we have brain fog. I wanna thank you again for sharing your Saturday with me. And if you're just tuning in, you can catch this show on YouTube at Wake Up With Marcy. I'll see you next Saturday. Have an awesome week.